people live in such fear, but this podcast is going to bring you a lot of encouragement. Every single person in every single area of your life, this pertains to you, no matter what you're doing, stay tuned. I'm Christy Code Red, and you're listening to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle, where we believe food holds the power to heal or poison, and we believe our society has been misled regarding proper nutrition and weight loss. You're in the right place if you're looking for some straight-up truth, because I'm here to shed light on the lies and brainwashing that has taken place over the past five decades. Thanks so much for listening. Welcome back to another episode of Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. I'm your host, Christy Code Red, author, entrepreneur, retired professional boxer. And we're talking about in this podcast, find out if you're right. Find out if you're right. Well, find out if you're right. And I want to start off by uh, talking about the Bible. Exodus 14. I don't. I don't know. I've got it pulled up here in front of me just in case I don't get this right, but I'm going to paraphrase it for you. You can go and look it up in your Bible if you want to. Um, I don't have my glasses in here, so I'm going to read from the computer instead of reading from my Bible. Find out if you're right. Exodus 14, a very famous story that all of us know, even if you are not, if you, even if you didn't grow up in the church or grow up with you know, Christian parents or in a Christian family, uh, pretty much everybody knows about the parting of the Red Sea in Exodus 14. Um, such a great story. And I, I was looking up um, the, this, this scripture reference and Wikipedia said an old myth. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I understand that non-believers, I believe the Bible, I believe the Bible. And I know that non-believers, um, have a hard time believing some of the Bible stories in it. Uh, of course, I have a hard time believing that some of the stuff is taking place right now in the world today. There are things happening in the world today that are mind blowing things that, uh, you know, that, that our government's controlling and things that, that are, that's going on in the, in the deep state and the, the dark, dark, dark parts of our society that we would all not even be able to believe. So the parting of the Red Sea, a miracle of God, so many miracles of, that God performed when he rescued the children of uh, the, the Egyptian children from the hands of Pharaoh. Um, and it, it's just another one of God's amazing miracles when, when the Israelite children uh, were, were released from captivity and Moses was leading them to the promised land. So I'm going to paraphrase this for you. Um, bear with me here. Give me a little grace on, on paraphrasing. And some of you, uh, purists, you'll be pretty upset with me because I'm just going to give it to you straight, but listen, you can go in and read it yourself. Exodus 14. Basically what happened is Pharaoh, you know, Moses said, let my people go. These were slaves and the children of Israel, um, were slaves and Moses, uh, through obviously through God's help, convinced Pharaoh to let his people go. Cause you know, God wasn't, God, God wasn't kidding around when it, when it comes to his people. And that's just something we could do a whole podcast on that. Don't mess around with God's people. Don't mess around with God. He loves you more than anything. And, and he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And so he loves us the same way. He's a God of miracles. Nothing has changed with God. He has not changed. And those miracles that were performed um, many centuries ago, this is, it's the same God now. So for you, and there are still miracles being performed at every turn in today's society, but in just different ways. We don't see because we live in a different time, but it's the same God. And so the, um, they were fleeing in the desert and Pharaoh's army was coming after him. And they came to the Red Sea and God said, Hey, stretch out your arm and I'm going to part the waters and you're going to go across on dry land. And we all know that that's what happened. But here's the thing. The waters didn't part until the children of Israel took a step towards in, into the water. They had to actually take that step. That is the most significant part of the whole thing for me. I mean, it's, it is a miracle. Of course, God is, God is the God of miracles. I'm not ever surprised when I hear of God doing miracles. God can do anything. It's, it's, 
there's nothing too great for God. He's God. And so when I hear of like, oh my gosh, the walls of the Red Sea went straight up and the children of Israel walked past, walked across on dry land. And then God closed the waters over Pharaoh's men and all of them drowned. And so they, the children, once again, of Israel were saved. But here's the thing. Nothing happened until the children of Israel took a step into the water. They had to take that step. And that's why I named this find out if you're right. Find out if you're right. They had to find out they, it was a step of faith. If I've ever seen one now, of course they didn't, you know, like if you go to the Bible story about, um, Jesus walking on the water and which was it Peter that came walking out to him. Was it Peter? Was it Peter? You guys, Oh, I know that you Bible people are screaming out the right Matthew. Um, anyway, I think, uh, one of them climbed out and walked on water. Uh, you have to take that first step. That first step is always the hardest. We always say in boxing, the first round is the hardest. Uh, I say in running the first mile is the hardest. I just ran a half marathon on June 1st in Jackson hole, Wyoming, the grand Teton half marathon, my first half marathon, that first mile was the hardest. It was even harder than the last mile, the 13th mile. It was the first step is always the hardest. It, it is when, when I, when I go to do my workouts, when I, when I, I'm a competitive bodybuilder, the first rep is the hardest. I'm always better on the second and third sets than I am the first set. The second and third steps are I'm, I'm tired. The weight is usually heavier and yet I I'm stronger and I'm better. I'm, I don't know why it's just, it's the first step is always the hardest. And the children of Israel had to take that first step into the water. Bam. Moses had prayed, the waters parted, the children walked across on dry land. Can you imagine how terrifying that was to be ah, terrifying, but amazing. It's to live in those times. Um, I mean, it was just probably so miraculous, but I want to, I want to sidebar and say that right now, the times that we're living in are unprecedented what's going on with our government. And it is to live in these times to watch God, God show up to save our country is going to be awesome. I mean, we get to go to heaven someday and we're going to talk to each person because we are living in the end times. And I know that back when I was a kid in the seventies and eighties, you know, and back when my mom and dad were kids, they thought they were living in the end times. And so every generation thinks they're living in the end times, but we have some very, very strong biblical references to indicate that we're truly getting close to the tribulation, we're truly getting close to God coming back and Christ's return and all of us getting raptured up to heaven. I mean, we're truly getting close and we have some really strong sign of the times that are happening. And this government and this country we are in, is it, our society is crumbling every a little more every day. We have a diabolical, horrific government in place right now tearing and ripping our nation to threads and God's going to step in in the 11th hour, like he always does. And he's going to save this nation, but we got to be praying and we have to be believing and we have to be willing to take that first step. And I think that this, this can apply to every single area of your life. What I'm finding out are so many people, so many of you guys listening to this, you live in such fear. You live in such fear. You are afraid of so many things. Now, fear, like fear of spiders, fear of sp snakes. I'm not talking about that. Yes, yeah, some of you guys do. Some of you guys live with the fear of, you know, uh, I mean, I don't, I'm not a big fan of snakes either. You guys like ser seriously, and I don't want to get eaten by a python, you know, uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, do, but I'm talking about fear of doing what you fear of opening your business, fear of, um, you know, fear of your husband cheating on you. You live in fear of what's going to happen. If you lose your job, you live in fear of, of, uh, what's going to happen if you, um, you know, go on that, go on code red and lose all your weight. Are you going to gain it by just fear at every turn? I have a relative who lives in complete fear all the time, debilitating fear. This fear that she lives in has actually stopped her from, from, uh, living her life the way I think she was probably intended to live it. And now she's in her sixties. She's, and she's, it's, it's, um, it's sad because her entire life has gone by and she's still controlled by it, uh, just debilitating fear, fear that keeps her from living the life of her that she always dreamt of, uh, living a life that, that she was truly meant for. And so 
for those of you, I, I, let me just say from my perspective, and listen, I, I, I got a lot of things wrong. I get a lot of things wrong in my life. Um, I'm not good at very many things, but one thing that I am good at is I don't live in fear. I don't, I don't fear trying new things. I don't fear taking chances. I don't fear taking risks. Now you can sit here and look at me and say, yeah, Christy, you ain't got any kids. Uh, like you don't have anything to lose. Oh, I, I have a lot to lose. I don't have kids. You're right. I did not actually birth a child from my, from my birthing canal, but I, I do have a lot to lose. Uh, and I still don't fear. And even back when I was taking big risks with my company and taking big, I, I didn't, you know, I, I just, I just don't have that that, um, stronghold on me. I do not have that fear does not have a grip on me. It doesn't stop me from doing anything. Um, and I, I don't have this trembling anxiety, this, this, um, crippling anxiety that keeps me from doing things. I sometimes fear. I sometimes think, oh, this is a little bit scary. Like when I went to go run the half marathon, I I had never run 13.1 miles. In fact, a little, little, um, unknown fact. I had never run more than six, seven, eight miles. And then I just jumped right into, I don't even think I've run eight miles before. I think the farthest I'd ever run going into this half marathon was seven miles. And so, uh, we're talking almost twice as far and I was not well-trained and this was in a higher elevation than what I'm used to. Um, I was a little nervous. I would call it nervous, uh, but it didn't stop me from doing it. You know, I, I, I'm so certainly scared to death before I went into the, any boxing match. Everybody's afraid. Even Mike Tyson has, is afraid. You would be crazy if you know you weren't a little bit afraid. Um, but I didn't, that didn't stop me from doing it. So even if I feel, I don't feel fear a lot. Um, but even if I did feel a little bit of nerves or fear or trepidation, it doesn't stop me from doing it. Once I make my mind up to do something and I know it's safe. I'm going to do it. I mean, well, I should say safe. Jeez. I climbed up Mount Whitney. I did rim to rim. I've done some pretty crazy things that, um, probably weren't the safest. You know, I know that when I was climbing Mount Whitney, which is the tallest peak in the lower 48, I got to 14,000 elevation. It was a miserable climb because I got really, really severe altitude sickness and I was dizzy and nauseous the whole way up. It took me eight hours to summit and there are no railings. Um, people die every year on Mount Whitney, every actually multiple times a summer on Mount Whitney. Cause these are, um, horrific storms that just appear out of nowhere. And, um, the altitude sickness can make you sick. A lot of people climb it with oxygen. And I, I was a little bit nervous. Like, you know, you're on this path on the side of a rock that's chiseled out of the stone. So it's not a real path. It's just a, um, a, a, like a kind of a, a, an area of demarcation where you need to, it's like a mountain goat path and there are no rails and people fall to their death all the time. You get dizzy and you fall. And so probably not the smartest thing to do to summit that sucker when I was so incredibly sick, but so I'm, I'm not saying I'm the smartest person ever, you know, I've, I've done some skydiving. I've done some, you know, uh, just done some things like that. So I'm, I don't have a, but I've always, that's never stopped me from doing it because I find out if I'm right. Sometimes I'm right. And sometimes I'm not, but I find out if I'm right, find out if you're right. People say, well, I don't know what God's got for me in my life. I don't, I don't know what God's will is for my life. That was a big thing when I was a kid, when I was a kid, it was all about God's will, God's will, God's will, God's will. And that's a great thing to be focused on. You do want God's will because his will for your life is the perfect will. Um, uh, and you know, I have a coffee cup and it says life is all about how you handle plan B. My life has all been all about plan B and there's not, there's no plan A. And some of you guys are a hundred percent plan A. I'm a hundred percent plan B. Nothing in my life has gone as I'm sure none of it's God's will. I'm sure it's not. I mean, you know, I always say this is what I do as a weight loss coach is what I was put on this earth to do. I don't, I don't know. That's what I feel, but I was, maybe I was put on this earth to be a mom and I was never a mom. And so I don't know. I I don't, you don't really know. You won't really know, I guess, until we all get to heaven. I don't even know if that's even worth showing us what could have been in our lives. I, I don't, what's the point of that? But, uh, I, 
when I was a kid growing up, it was all about what is God's will for my life. And, and we just hyper-focused on this in youth group. We hyper-focused on this in church. You know, you had to choose a partner and this was going to be the partner that God had for you and that you had been praying for since you were a little kid and you chose a husband and you got married. You didn't have sex before marriage and you waited until you got married. You got married and you stayed married forever. That was just, you don't get divorced. That's just not the, what you, what we believed in the Pentecostal, uh, Christian faith. And that's not what the, the Bible just said. And it would be great in a perfect world. That'd be great if everybody saved themselves from marriage and everybody stayed married to the original person. We have a, a rampant epidemic of infidelity in today's society. It's terrible. I mean, we've just swung so far the other way. The divorce rate is now 60%. It used to be 51%. It's 60%. So that's terrible. And I've been divorced a couple of times. I'm not happy about that. I'm not proud of myself for that. I've just, and I don't even believe it's because the, I, I take full responsibility for my part in this. Um, it, so I, I know that that was really a big thing when we were growing up, you know, you, you, you picked a partner, you prayed for your husband. God just magically brought this guy into your life somehow, some way. And then you, you know, you, got married and you had kids and you just, you just started doing God's will, whatever God's will for your life was, you just were doing it. And, um, it was really, um, disappointing when I was growing up to learn, I had made a couple of mistakes picking different men that were wrong for me. Uh, and I never had kids. So that was never, I never, I never went to college to do what I thought that God wanted me to do. I mean, I, always just kind of thought I would be like, I mean, I, I remember in high school, I, uh, before, you know, I thought about, I, I would be a dental hygienist, you know, that's what I wanted to do. And then when I went in, when I got my first job at the Orfino care center at, in housekeeping department, and then I got my CNA, I fell head over heels in love with nurses and I wanted to be a nurse desperately. And I remember the exact moment that my, I mean, I don't have a lot of memories because of my head injury, but I remember that exact moment. And so then what if that was God's will? What if it was God's will for me to be a dental hygienist and then a God's will for me to be a nurse and then God's will for me to be a weight loss coach. And what if it was God's will for me to be a personal trainer? I don't know you guys. I don't know all the things I've done. I think that God can bless you in whatever you do, but we always get so hung up on, well, what is God's will? God's will for your life is for you to love him, love him and praise him and be grateful to him and to honor him and to love your neighbor and to be, uh, to be Christ-like as much as you can, not perfect. There's no way you can be, but tr spending time with God and having a relationship with him and having him be a part of every part of your life and just spending time and being friends and, uh, and keeping him top priority in your life and honoring yourself with keeping your health good and, and, um, you know, being kind to people. Um, and so I believe that's God's will. God's will is for you to love him. You know, God's will is for you to honor him and, uh, be, and have a relationship with him. That's truly is God's will. Uh, the Bible says, um, mom, what is that scripture? I should have had it in all your things, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not into your own understanding and in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path and he will direct your path. And that's what I've kind of, um, I've kind of discovered in my forties. Finally, I remember at 40 years old, I discovered that God's not mad at me and that he will direct my path. And so I ask God to be a part of everything that I do and direct my path in whatever I do. Um, and I know, I mean, the Holy spirit convicts me right off the bat. If I say something that I shouldn't have said, um, I have been, um, deeply, deeply hurt by some family issues, deeply, deeply hurt by some family issues over the past six months. Um, and things that I found out and I have mentioned it publicly and I know it's cringy when I mention it publicly and now it's out there and, and whatever. I mean, I'm not going to take it back. I said it. And I, and I know that it's, 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 it's cringy. I think that's the best way to say it. It's cringy when I, when I say things that probably should just be kept, you know, in, within the family, but sometimes, you know, you just kind of, 
live your life on video, you live your life on Instagram, you live your life on YouTube, you live your life on social media, and you kind of people want to come along with you for the ride with with throughout your life. Um, and people buy things from people they know, like, and trust. And so I learned early on to kind of put everything out there because I wanted to earn trust with my community. And probably I put a little too much out there. And so I definitely don't hit the mark every time for sure. I miss the mark a lot, but I kind of just have to step out and find out. I find out if I'm right. I, I move in a direction and I find out if I'm right. I move in this direction. I find out if I'm right. You know, right now at the time I'm recording this in June of 2024, uh, my cottage is for sale at uh, Tamarack. And this cottage is a two bedroom, three bath. And it's just too big for Hazel and me. We don't need that much space. I'm a minimalist and I don't want more than what I, I don't even go to the second half of the cottage, my little cabin. I love it. It's a great location. It's beautiful. It's just absolutely, it's like a little gingerbread house. It's really, really, really awesome, but I don't need that much space. So I have put that cottage up for sale and a contingent offer on the penthouse condo in the village, which is quite a bit smaller. Um, I think my cottage is 1300 square feet and the condo is a thousand square feet. And so that would eliminate that whole extra bedroom and bathroom that I just don't need. And so I don't know. I'm going to find out if I'm right. I don't know. I'm going to find out if I'm right. I'm going to put it out there and maybe I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to trust that God directs my path. Okay. What if I'm wrong? What if I was never supposed to sell that cottage? What if I'm supposed to sell the cottage and I lose the condo and I don't have a cabin anymore? Maybe God moves me in a different direction. I'm going to find out if I'm right. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be stifled. I'm not going to be frozen in fear and not make any decision because I'm too afraid that that will be the wrong decision. What is worse than the wrong decision is no decision. Did you hear what I said? What's worse than the wrong decision is no decision. And you're like, well, I, mean, baby, I just don't know. Oh, no, I, I do know. And you are wrong. You are wrong for thinking that. Well, I'm just not going to. And so you don't do anything. You don't do anything. Step out and find out. Find out if you're right. Find out something. It's a 50, 50 chance. But if you don't do anything, it's a 0% chance. I would rather 50, 50 than 0%. I, I, there's this company I know in Austin, no, not in Austin. They, they're out of Vegas and it's called acquisition. Acquis it's, it's Layla and, and Alex Hormozzi. And I had dinner with them in Las Vegas a couple of years ago. Um, and they are mutual friends and they own acquisition.com and they wanted to take code red to 30 million a year because you'd go from 1 million to 10 million to 30 million to 100 million that's can usually the progression of a company and so they wanted to take the next step which would be 30 million a year and but they take 40 50 percent of the revenue but still if i'm doing you know if i'm doing 7 million a year now and and then they and they get me up to 30 million but they keep half i'm still at 15 million i've still more than doubled where i am now but somebody, a pessimistic person or a person driven by fear or driven by doubt or unbelief or, or just somebody who is always looking at the glass half empty, they would say, but they're taking 50% of my revenue, but it's more, it's still 50% is more than what you had. But if they just get so caught up on they're taking half of my revenue. They got you to 30 million. You were at 7 million. They got you to 30 million. You now walk with 15. Come on, you're still more than doubling what you were making before. But I've seen I've seen people just be crippled with this whole thought that I don't want someone to take 50% of my revenue. And you don't go anywhere. You don't you don't go anywhere. You don't ever grow. You don't ever try anything. You don't ever step out and find out. You don't ever find out if you're right because you're too afraid of being wrong. Get used to being wrong. Fall in love with failing. I should have called the podcast fall in love with failing, fall in love with failing. I, I don't know. I don't really, I think that's a very Gary Vaynerchuk. He, he's so far the other, he's so far 
into just fall in love with failing. And I, we all have a place in this world and I love Gary V. I've read all of his books twice. I watch him on Instagram. I, I love Gary Vaynerchuk. He's extremely intelligent. He knows what he's doing. He's authentic. He's real. He's consistent. And he has extremely successful businessman. And he is all, he is, he swings so far one way of just get used to failing, be okay with failing, fail all the time, be happy while you're failing. Well, listen, listen, every old dog needs a bone, you know? I mean, I don't know if I could be knocked down all day, every day and continue to get up. I can get knocked down quite a bit and still continue to get up. I don't need, uh, I definitely, the failures, um, outnumber the wins pretty much in all of our lives, but you got to have a, a one win can carry you pretty far. You know, I mean, look at this $10 million award right behind me. Look at that. I got that in, I mean, I, I got that at the end of 2020. Um, and that, that has, and it's been four years and I've still been riding that high. Look at that belt. You can see the edge of this boxing belt. That was one of my championship fights. And I, Oh, I put that belt behind me and that was back in 2005. And so we're talking 19 years and I'm still proud of that. You know, look at this, a beautiful magazine cover that I was on, um, for the Boise lifestyle magazine. And I love that magazine cover and I'm super proud of that. Um, and that, that was 2000, uh, 2000 may of 2021. And so we're talking for a little over four years, uh, three years ago. So it's, I, I, one win can carry me for a long time. I mean, I can, I don't need a lot of wins to feel pretty good, you know, but, but you do need some wins. Um, and so the whole Gary Vaynerchuk way of looking at things of just get used to failing, boy, it's hard for the average person to, to continue to move forward when they're doing nothing but failing. I will say that the, one of the reasons why I have been so successful and I'm still here in this very saturated industry of weight loss is because I have not stopped, even though I got knocked down so many times, so many people give up. So you do need to, when you, when you find out if you're right and you throw something against the wall and you, and if it sticks, it sticks, if it falls off, you go to the next thing, that process does take a lot of grit and you will, something will stick. Eventually you will, you will, you will hit something. Something will hit if you play long enough, um, you will have successes, but I can't tell you how many times I have, uh, you know, I've tried, I've stepped out to find out and I was wrong. And then I tried something else and I was wrong and I tried something else and I was wrong. And then I tried something and man, it hit, it was a gold vein. Find out if you're right. You cannot advance if you do not get some freaking guts and put it out there, you know, just put it out there. You know, if you're in the dating world, don't be cringy. Don't be weird. Hey, would you like to go for a walk with me on your next day off? Put it out there. You know, I love walking. That's why I, <laughs> plus I can take Hazel and it's two birds, one stone, or I guess three birds. Hazel gets exercise. I get exercise and I get to you know, I get to get to know the person I'm walking with. I always opt for walking and visiting walking as like a, a date or a way to get to know somebody, you know, a mentor, Lori Stobart was here a couple of months ago in Boise. And I said, would you like to go for a three mile walk? And it was so wonderful to visit with her and walk at the same time. It was beautiful. We got exercise. We got our steps in Hazel got the poop again, and it was just wonderful. And so what's wrong with saying to that person, would you like to meet me at Atavola for coffee Tuesday morning at 9 a.m.? You know, what, what's it? Just put it out there. Find out. Step out and find out what's going to happen. You don't know. There's a 50 50 chance of it working, but there's a 0% chance of it working if you don't do anything. Find out if you're right. Find out if you're right. And, and that's, and of course, we didn't even touch on weight loss. We didn't even, you know, people, I, I, I wish I had a dollar for every time I heard, well, what if I fail? But what if you don't, there's a 50, 50 chance of that happening. You know, what if real food, water, and sleep resonates with you? What if no shakes, pills, diet foods, or exercise actually resonates with you? You can lose 10% of your body weight every month with real food, water, and sleep. What if it works? Well, you've seen it work with other people. Well, but you don't know if it's going to work for you. I don't know if it's going to work for you. 
find out if you're right. Find out if I'm right in that case, because I'm the one that's trying to convince you. Step out and find out. You you know, it, it, we just don't know. Try the proper human diet. I mean, we could go we could go on weight loss. The whole thing could have been about weight loss because so many people, they, 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 it's not that they don't know if it's going to work for, yeah, that is, it's not that they don't, they don't think it doesn't work. They see that it works for other people. They just don't know if it's going to work for them, A, and B, they don't know if they're going to stick with it. Will I be able to give up my wine? Will I be able to give up my breadsticks at, at Olive Garden? Will I be able to give up my diet soda uh, addiction? Will I be able to switch from putting white refined sucrose sugar in my coffee to doing raw organic non-GMO stevia that I have on my Amazon shop page, code redlifestyle.com forward slash Amazon. Check that out. It comes with a little tiny baby spoon because you only need a little tiny bit of the pure stuff. You know, switching from, can I switch from real sugar to, to a sweetener? Can I do it? Am I gonna be able to see this through? Find out if you're right. Because it's a $27, $27 investment to join the 10 pound takedown for crying out loud. It ain't that much. Really, it's not. It's not that much. Find out if you're right. So many things in your life that are holding you back because you don't think you're going to be right. You don't think it's the right decision. You don't think it's the right path. You don't, or you don't know, not, not that you don't think it's the right path. You don't know. I mean, it's one thing to have a clear gut feeling that this is the wrong path, that this is the wrong decision. That that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, I don't, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what he'll say. I don't know what, what, I don't know what my boss will do. If I, um, if I ask for a raise, I don't know if I should, um, study nursing or study dental hygiene. I don't know. 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 Find out if you're right. Make, choose, choose a three, two, one, go. Choose it. Choose it. Make a decision. Choose it. Find out if you're right. Just make a decision. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Always remember that it's worse to not make a decision than it is to make the wrong decision. I just don't think it's the wrong decision. I mean, you can call it another thing that's less aggressive. You can say it just was, I don't know. You can say like, it wasn't that you made the wrong, like almost like a, like a Bob Ross happy accident. Okay. Um, you know, and by the way, this does not apply to you doing margaritas and chips on, on Monday night with the girls when you knew you shouldn't have, you're on code red and you got a customized program. You're in VIP. And you went out for margarita Mondays and chose to drink margaritas and eat the burrito and have three baskets of chips. Well, I, I made a mistake. No, you didn't. You made a choice. No, you didn't. You made a bad choice. Don't call it a mistake. Well, now I know you knew before you did it. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about honestly, not knowing it's just better to make a wrong choice than no choice. Just stand there and not make any decision at all. And just frozen in fear, don't 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 let that be you. Life is too short for that. <coughs> Step out and find out. Find out if you're right. Find out if you're right. Just choose something. Three, two, one, go. Just make a decision. I I I believe in I believe in being thoughtful and seeking wise counsel, but I believe in pulling the trigger. Don't have analysis paralysis where you don't do anything because you're overthinking. Well, I'm a chronic. Oh, how about this bull crap? How about these people that say, well, I'm a perfectionist. I'm a perfectionist. I'm a, oh, I hate that. I hate that when people say that, well, I'm a perfectionist. No, Karen, don't sit there and say you're a perfectionist. Well, first of all, your house is a, is a mess. You, you're overweight. Your house is a mess. Your kids don't even have their hair combed. Okay. You're late to work. Don't sit there and tell me you're a perfectionist. Okay. And that's your bull crap excuse. I'm a perfectionist. That's why I can't make a decision. I can't, can't do it unless it's perfect. I can't do it unless it's perfect. Oh my gosh. That is such baloney. Talk about, you know, and I know that there are people who really do uh, suffer from this whole analysis paralysis. They're overthinkers. So they just don't pull the trigger. They don't pull the trigger because they just, they, they, because they're like, I just want it to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect. Look, 
My website is the perfect example of something that like, I am constantly unhappy with my website. I'm always unhappy with my website. I am. And I, I mean, I just put like 40 grand into the website here, a couple, uh, like last year, 2023. And I, and I'm always unhappy with it, but at least it's done. All right. At least it's there. At least it's done. I I'm, I'm never happy with my website, but at least there's a website there. At least it's somewhat redesigned. At least it's somewhat user-friendly. At least it's somewhat organized. But those of you guys who have never started a website, you won't do anything because just want it perfect. And then now a year and a half later, you still ain't got a website for your, for your car cleaning service. You still ain't got a website for your daycare service because you're like, just wait, I just don't, it's just not perfect yet. I hate that. I hate that about people. It's just la it's lazy. It's lazy. And you're like, oh, that's me, Christy. You're being mean. Okay, maybe I am a little bit. Step out and find out. Find out if you're right. For crying out loud, pull the trigger. Make a decision. Just do it. Three, two, one, go. Just do something. Stop just standing there waiting for life to pass you by because that's what's happening. The days turn into weeks. The weeks turn into months. The months turn into years. You go in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. You, ever did, you never did anything because you were so paralyzed with fear. You didn't want to make the wrong decision. So all these years have passed by and you haven't done anything. Just do something. Don't do nothing. I, I would rather have an, a, a person come and help me. I get hit by a car in the crosswalk and, and they pull me out of the crosswalk and I don't know, my neck is broken. I mean, I'd rather, and now I'm paralyzed, but at least I didn't get run over by the car. They pulled me out. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like at least someone made a decision to do something instead of just left me there in the, in the crosswalk because they didn't know what to do. So now I got run over by a car. Even worse, now I'm dead. Instead, they dragged me to the side of the road to save my life. And now, but my neck was broken and now I'm paralyzed. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just ridiculous. A decision was made. At least a decision was made. All right. I'm not going to blame that good Samaritan. The decision was made in the haste, in, a, in, in the moment they made a decision to save my life. And even if I'm paralyzed, my life is saved now, you know, and, and I'm just, you've got to step up and find out if you're right. Instead of being so paralyzed with fear that you could make the wrong decision. I just don't know. I just don't know. Just three, two, one, go three, two, one, go find out if you're right. Find out if you're right. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much for listening to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. If you are looking for some hardcore accountability to get and keep this weight off, look no further because I've got VIP connection. This is the ultimate connection to me just short of me sleeping on your couch. You're going to get three daily messages from me in real time directly to you. You're going to submit your weight every Friday. We're going to go over it in a weekly meeting on Sunday nights, and I'm going to give you feedback. You'll have access to a monthly VIP breakfast with me and Boise, a monthly VIP supplement box, access to any workshop, any PDF promo that I hold for that month. You'll have access to the ringside membership. And best of all, you'll have a fully customized nutrition program written just for you. We're talking about over $3,000 total value for $3.97 a month, and you can cancel anytime. Go to coderedlifestyle.com forward slash VIP to check that out.